Hello, and welcome to this short demo of the Apache Chemistry Workbench. In the next few minutes, I'll be showing you how to obtain and run the workbench and why you should be using it for CMIS development. For this particular demonstration, I'll be using IBM CMIS servers, both the P8 and CM8 versions. However, the great thing about this tool is that it works against any 1.0 compliant CMIS server. So the first thing you want to do is jump over to the home page for chemistry, shown here. And if you can't make out the URL in my browser, it is chemistry.apache.org. And here you can read about all about the multiple language bindings and great tools that chemistry has to offer. One language binding in particular, OpenCMIS, is the very mature and stable Java binding that the workbench tool that I'm going to demonstrate for you is built on top of. So over here on the left, you'll see a section for downloads in the Java section. And within the download section, there's a couple different ways you can, you can get a hold of this. Um, over here under the CMIS Workbench link, it'll take you to a place where you can get nightly builds. Um, that's only something you would need to do if you need something later than the released version. So if you're participating in chemistry development or you you looking for a recent bug fix or something like that otherwise this uh, this 030 version is extremely stable and uh, this is probably your best bet so you download the OpenCMIS workbench it takes you to a list of zip files basically mirrors that you can download from and pull down any of these and extract that zip file to a directory and that will take us over to here where we just unzip the zip file and refresh that directory and here you can see there's a lib directory with all the dependent jars it's all pretty much self-contained in this directory and if you're in Linux you can run the shell script and if you're in Windows you can run the batch file I'm going to resize the screen here. Okay, I think that fits a little better. So the login screen will allow you to enter your credentials and the uh, starting point URL. Here in this in this dialog, where you can um, select either Adam Pub or Web Services, and then your credentials and the type of authentication, etc. Whether or not you want to use uh, GZIP header compression, um, you can also just save all those settings in a text file and just uh, paste them in. that and then you select load repositories it'll go and get repository information and you select which repository you want to connect to and you're in so here in this pane on the left is your navigation pane what we're looking at right now you can see is the root folder and I can scroll through and see some of the documents down here whatever you select say I select a PNG file the tabs here refer to what's being selected in this window. So I can see uh, various information about this particular object, its ID, its type, uh, its path, its the URL to the content stream, and all of the allowable actions here. I can see the actions themselves if I want to perform them, if I want to delete the object or check it in, check it out, set the content stream. If I want to uh, inspect the properties, I can scroll through here and look at all the properties. And of course, you know, I can I can move the columns around as you would expect in a this type of a GUI. Um, I can look at the versions. This particular doc only has one version. I can look at its type, its CMIS type. So in this case it's it's a CMIS document. And then the pane here below in the split pane are all the property types on that document type. So you can see all the things that you would expect to see for CMIS document here. And then looking at a folder. Actually, let's go into another folder here. So along the top are operations that you can perform in general, like uh, well, connection is just the login screen that we were just looking at. And repository information is the 
just an HTML rendering, well, it's not HTML, it's a swing rendering of the information in the repository XML, the repository info. You can see here the name of the repository and the uh, root folder ID and all of its capabilities. Types will download the entire set of metadata for this server and let you navigate it through this tree view control. So I can see all my folder types and say I wanted to look at um, mm -hmm. CMIS scalers. I see all the information about CMIS scalers here. This is just a, a demo type for unit tests. And then here I can see all of the custom data types that were that are present and all of their metadata, all the associated metadata for each, like for example, type cardinality, updatability, query name. And then of course all the familiar CMIS IDs that you see on all documents. The query button will allow me to select queries and basically type in free form CMIS query language and it will give me back a nice graphical representation of the result set along with all of the metadata that I can scroll through and look look over here and same kind of thing if I want to move some of the fields around view them differently say for example I only wanted to see five five items the TCK allows you to run the OpenCMIS TCK against your repository so if you're a developer of a repository this is going to be very helpful to you this will give you a really easy platform you don't have to set it up in, a, in Maven or an Eclipse environment you just click on this button and select which test you want to run and they run and then up pops a window with uh, with your results I'm not going to run that right now because of time but uh, that, that's more of a server development sort of function uh, here if I wanted to create a document or a folder in this uh, folder I can I can do those types of things say we wanted to create a folder here and say cam test one and I can select which metadata type I want to use let's just use a basic folder and there it is now we have this new empty directory and most importantly I think is the console so what the console will allow you to do is run groovy scripts based on the OpenCMIS Java API against the repository that you've already connected to so say for example I wanted to do a count of the types and subtypes this is just example code that comes with it I'm going to resize this window a little bit so this is just some groovy code that is making uh, Java API calls. You can see here this session object. That's actually the session that we defined when we entered our connection information to the server. So that just gets carried over for us so we don't have to set that up each time. And this, this code here just uh, does a walkthrough of all of the types and uh, prints out the account total. So if I wanted to run it, Groovy prints out the code as, as it compiles it, and then there's the output. There you can see there are 20 document types and subtypes. There's four folder types and subtypes, and we don't have any relationships or policies. So this gives you a way to interactively script and test things, harnesses that you want to you know, test out in your server in a way that you know is going to be compliant with with all compliant repositories as opposed to trying to figure that out for yourself. Going back to this navigation pane, you'll see that you're not just limited to exploring the metadata. Uh, if you were to double click on a document, for example, the, the actual content payload of that document will come up and rendered in you know whatever MIME type you have registered for that in this case a JPEG. 
pretty much the full fidelity of most CMIS servers you can access here if not directly from this GUI then definitely from the console so just just an excellent excellent tool for doing development on uh, both the client side and the server side highly recommend it and also I want to say uh, special thanks to Florian Mueller over at Apache Chemistry for all the help that he's given us in uh, working with us and making sure that our servers are compatible with the uh, with the code in Apache Chemistry that pretty much covers it thank you